Well, you knew this one was coming, the Heritage Rough Rider versus the Ruger Wrangler. Stick around, check it out with me. But first, before we get started, don't forget to check out our friends over there at Workaday Custom Gun Leather, custom made to order. Go check them out. All right, guys, we finally got a good day for shooting, so I figured bring out these two instant classics to do a pretty quick comparison on these things. Both of these are inexpensive, very popular models. So first you have the Heritage, and then of course you have the Ruger Wrangler. So these both hit the market as affordable alternatives to more expensive 22.6 shooters. So both of them are made out of cast aluminum alloy, and both of them do have steel barrels, and of course they have steel cylinders. But they are both super lightweight. Both of them are sub $200 and very affordable to pretty much any consumer out there. So the question is, are these things pretty much the same gun? No, they're not, actually. They're very, very different. The Heritage Rough Rider is actually more closely copied after the original Colt Single Action Army, and Ruger is, of course, of its own creation. Now, it is a single action, as is the Heritage, but they both operate completely different. Now, to say that they operate differently, we're talking mechanically here, okay? Now, on both of them, you have to cock the hammer to rotate the cylinder for each shot. Same thing. But the way that they operate is completely different. So if you look at the Ruger here, it's a very long hammer pull, but it's single position. So there is no half cock option, even though you hear a click. See, it's just setting the trigger, you might've saw it. But it doesn't actually rotate the cylinder all the way and place it into the firing lock position until it's all the way back. Now, as for the Heritage, there's a safety position, there's a half cock position, and then fully cocked. The Ruger Wrangler is, of course, a more modernized version of it, as you're going to see, and it's obviously not loaded. It's going to have the safety transfer bar in there, so if you accidentally drop it, or if you happen to short cock it, that transfer bar is going to take up any kind of impact there, so it doesn't accidentally discharge the round. That's a very, very nice modern safety feature. And the Heritage is more like the original Colt Single Action, is you're going to have that safety notch that you can actually carry this on, the half cock loading position, which will rotate the cylinder, and then of course the full cock. Now the thing about Heritage is because they don't have that transfer bar, it's actually got a manual safety that you'll see right there that you click on and off. And that's unique to Heritage manufacturing. No other revolver series has that. Now if you notice with the Heritage, you have to put it on the half cock in order to rotate that cylinder. Now, okay, well, what are you going to do? How are you going to load this thing? Uh, well, while it's still in the down position, you can't rotate it. While it's cocked, you can't rotate it, right? But here's the thing. The way Ruger does it, you open up that loading gate, it will freely rotate. Just like that. Close up that loading gate, it no longer rotates. So that's how you load it up. So, therefore, ensuring that the gun is always going to be unsafe during loading. One thing you're going to notice right away, my heritage is way prettier than the Ruger here. And that's because I customized this one. The nice thing about heritage manufacturing is they have a whole slew of customizable options that you can add into there. You can add new cylinders, you can add new grips. Some of them you can even change out the sights on it. It's really, really nice. Now the drawback on that is the parts are cheap, the gun's cheap, manufacturer wise anyway. So bear that in mind, you get what you pay for. It might be pretty, but it might not be the best. So far, mine's been a very good quality. Now, if you look at the Ruger here, I haven't found much in the way of customizable parts, but this thing's pretty much already a tank how it is. So it's got matte black finish, and you're gonna see that the grips here are plastic. Very simple. I'm sure that you can get other kinds of grips for it if you wanna get a wood finish or something, but I haven't been able to find any on the market. I'm sure by the time this video goes on, somebody will find them and that's fine. But I'm just saying, as of right now, based on what I've seen and what I've put together, the Heritage can be much prettier because it's more customizable than the Ruger is. Another thing you're gonna notice as soon as you put the gun in the hand is the weight difference. It's not much, but there's definitely a weight difference. The Ruger is actually heavier than the Heritage. And you can tell, it's just, it feels like a tank of a gun. Where this one, it's more light and you can kind of see the unfinished marks on it, but all the same, it, there's definitely a big durability difference. Now when you get to the range and you take the two of them side by side, you're going to notice a different shooting experience with both of them as well. So to start off, the sights, they are in fact different. They're both cut out sights, cut out fixed sights, 
but the Ruger has more defined, bigger, easier to pick up sights than the Heritage does. And the thing about the Ruger is their quality control is much, much better. I hate to say it. As much as I do love my Heritage, Ruger is 10 times better in quality control. Whenever you pick one of these up off the shelves, you know you're going to have Ruger quality and the darn thing's going to be cut just right. I actually had to send a prior Heritage back because the sights weren't properly cut. There was issues with the barrel. So there's definitely quality issues, but as far as the sights go, Ruger wins. So that's basic spec comparison on the two guns. Question is, how do they shoot side by side? So we're gonna do a comparison shoot of 10 yards and 15 yards respectively, and we're gonna see how they do. Like we talked about a minute ago, loading these guns up is pretty similar, but with the Heritage, of course, you gotta put out that gate. Cylinder don't move like it does on the Ruger, does it? So you put it on the half cock right there, now it'll freely move. And then one by one, you put your cartridges in the cylinder. All right, and there you have six. So let's do it at five yards. Uh, I ended up doing five yards to start off with instead of the 10, that seemed a little bit too ambitious. So let's see how we do here. Left hand side's gonna be the heritage. That's looking pretty good. All right, so now we're gonna do on the right-hand side of five yards, the Ruger. That's pretty good. And there are five yards. It's kind of kind of hard to tell there. I keyholed a couple of them. I know that I watched it happen. And these all grouped up really nice. These two I know for a fact that I pulled, but the rest of them all pretty much in the same. So at five yards, that's nothing for these guns. So we're gonna take the Heritage at 10 yards and we're gonna do it on the left-hand target there. We're gonna be doing two-handed shooting on this one, and then we're gonna compare them both with the one-handed shooting. So let's see how she does. Almost forgot the safety. There's six. So let's do the Wrangler at 10 yards now. Loading this one up is actually, in my opinion, a little bit easier because there's less movement. All you do is you pop the loading gate open, put it in there. Now I noticed that the cylinder on this, it, for some reason to me, it feels like it's kind of gummy to put them in there. But I mean, it's everything locks up tight and it's just fine and it loads without issue, as you can see. And there it goes. Let's give it some shots. All right, at 10 yards with the Ruger Wrangler, both hands. Right hand target. Wow, Ruger's looking pretty good here. And that's what you get at 10 yards right there. The Heritage is on the left, the Ruger's on the right. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty substantial difference right there. So I pasted the targets, and we're gonna take six shots with each gun at 10 yards here, but one-handed. So let's see how they do. Maybe there is a difference. A lot of people will say that revolvers were made to be shot one-handed, so we're gonna see if there's any truth to that uh, as far as these guns go, if there's any kind of noticeable difference. All right, Heritage on the left side.
<laughs> I'll be darned. It actually looks better than the other group. All right, now on the right hand target, we're gonna do the Ruger. No safety to mess with this time. Not so good that time. So on both of them, you're gonna see a left hand string pattern and that's just gonna be me shooting one handed. But they seem to be kind of grouping up here. That's about the same right there. So I'm kind of curious. Let's do that one more time just to be sure. Now in the interest of brevity, I'm just gonna do three shots two-handed, three shots one-handed, just to kind of shore up uh, the differences that came out of that. So left hand is gonna be the heritage. And now we'll do the Ruger, three two-handed, three one-handed. Well, maybe I'll blame my shaky handedness on the uh, first volley with the heritage because one, two, three, four, five, six, that's 10 times better than it was the first round. So I believe it, these were the first three, if I remember correctly, but you just have to look at shot cam. That'll, that'll tell you where it was. But even so, that group's better than the original two handed shoot. Now, as for the Ruger, first two shots, uh, one that went up high, that was me. I did that. And then you had the steady drift left from the one-handed shooting. At 15 yards, let's see if there's any kind of notable difference. If anything improves, probably gets worse, we're going to find out. Left side's going to be heritage. Right side's gonna be Ruger at 15 yards. <laughs> They're both ugly. And Heritage on the left, actually not horrendous. At 15 yards, that's in that short four and a half inch barrel, I think it is, or four and three quarters or something like that. It's it's moving in here pretty good. I mean, it's, it's still hitting on target pretty decent. And same goes with the Wrangler right there. Neither one are much to write home about, but I mean, they're still hitting on target. Now I noticed the Wrangler likes to tend left. So that's using a couple big paper targets, but let's see how it really works out when it really counts. So if you're aiming for a small concentrated target, such as a swinger down there, let's see if anything's gonna change. You don't have this big wide berth to aim into, you get the small concentrated space. So we seem to have the most uh, halfway decent results at 10 yards. So we're gonna start off on the left swinger with the heritage on the lower end. And when we get to the Ruger, we're going to do the right hand swinger.
and that's six dings. And now for the Ruger, right hand swinger, 10 yards. And I believe that was six dings as well. On the left, one, two, three, four, five, six hits for the heritage. And on the right, one, two, three, four, five, six hits for the Ruger. So that little exercise with the dingers, uh, that's a phenomenon that I noticed while shooting with the dingers down there, it's you hit or you miss. And that's all it is. So maybe for me, mentally, having that very small focus target where you either hit it or you miss it, makes a little bit more difference because at 10 yards, if you looked at the target, some of those groups are pretty horrendous. But if you look at the dingers down there now, eh, they're not actually that terrible. And all six hit on both. So I'm gonna show you one more thing. Accuracy aside, okay, obviously it looks like the Ruger wins in that department. But in versatility factor, the Heritage, I think, pulls ahead in that category anyway. So 22 long rifles, great. Okay, they're great for plinking and stuff like that. But what if you want to get that extra little bit of power? What if for some reason, for one reason or another, you're using a 22 as a defensive arm? Well, 22 long rifle will do the job, but not as good as a 22 Magnum. Now, if you compare the two of them, the 22 Magnum is obviously a torpedo next to that 22 long rifle. Now, the one thing that Heritage does have that Ruger does not have is you can swap out the cylinders for a Magnum cylinder. So real simple, all you do is you put it on half cock as if you're gonna load it, put out that loading gate, and on this side, you can see the button there, push that in and you're gonna pull out that retention lever. It's gonna look like that, okay. The cylinder will roll out, stow that in my pocket. You take your magnum cylinder, roll it in, Gonna replace that cylinder retention rod. And there you go. You just converted it to a 22 Magnum. Now, like I talked about just a second ago, if you have to use a 22 as a defensive arm, now there could be any reason for this. It could be a financial issue, it could be all you can have in your state or territory, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Bottom line is, if you're stuck with this, why not go with something that you can actually make more powerful and more defensible? So by having the ability to change this out to a Magnum cylinder, that's a huge advantage over that Ruger as far as using this in a practical purpose, like defensive options, home defense, carry for some reason, you know, whatever. So that's, that's a pretty darn good advantage it has there. All right, so why am I making such a big deal about the 22 Magnum? It doesn't really make that much of a difference, does it? Well, you tell me. I'm gonna start off on the right this time with the Ruger, and then I'll show you the Magnum on the left. And now the Magnum. You tell me if there's a difference. <laughs> There's the entry hole, there's the exit, and then we'll find the one that flew all the way up here. There's the entry hole. There's the exit hole. Rip the whole back end out of it. Well, that's about it, guys. That was kind of fun. Uh, showing off these two very inexpensive good options that you have so at close quarters within 10 yards You're doing pretty good. Hell even at 15 yards. You're still doing halfway decent. You're hitting on target 
versatility points goes to the heritage as you can switch out the cylinder to that more powerful magnum cylinder and also you can customize the parts better quality manufacture and accuracy goes to the ruger hands down the accuracy was better like the quality of it there's no loosening nothing rattling around this thing's just a solid piece so they have their goods they both have their bads ultimately whichever one you decide you want to go to the store and buy if not both that's up to you uh, I'm sure there's plenty of other resources out there that you can look at that will compare the two of them but that's pretty much what I gathered from them so take it for what it is you know and make a choice from there personally I like them both one for the Ruger accuracy and the quality and obviously this is prettier the heritage is way prettier and uh, I like the older feel that it's closer to the original SAA but then you still have your quality assurance issues and minor accuracy issues but either way they're both still fun so anyway hope you guys enjoy it again don't forget to like subscribe and share with your buddies until next time